sitting with me today, I have Andrew Wolf from USAopoly. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you for having me. And it's kind of exciting. I'm pretty stoked about this. Breaking news, like worldwide first public announcement is happening right now, right True. here with Andrew and me. So with that kind of lead in, no pressure. No, okay. Let's yes. bring on the info. All right, this is the big one, as we like to say. So, What's this, Andrew? <laughs> this is Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. Mm -hmm. It's a cooperative deck building game that we launched last year uh, around Gen Con. And I I think it did pretty well. It seemed to have heard some, a little bit about it. some success. Uh, we were obviously very excited about it, and it seems like the response from the public has been really tremendously, overwhelmingly positive. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, as with many deck building games, I think there's always the assumption that there's going to be more, and there is going to be more. Yay! So we are thrilled to announce that coming later this year, hopefully again around that Gen Con time frame, we're going to be releasing an expansion for it called... Do, 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 do. I'm going to move this up here. There you go. We all lined up. Yep. Uh, should we flip it around? There yeah, there you go. That's there, better. <laughs> all right. Uh, it's Harry Potter Hogwarts boss, uh, Battle, the Monster Box of Monsters. So... What you could probably imagine from this is we're going to be focusing on all the really amazing creatures that exist in the wizarding world that Harry and his friends have to interact with. Oh, wow. So now, in addition to dealing with all the Death Eaters and villains and all the dark arts, you're going to get a whole new opportunity to explore a different aspect of it with the creatures that are inhabiting the wizarding world. Um, so let me kind of share some of the details. Please do. All right. I'm going to so, move this up a little bit. I think bit the first so thing the that we can talk real quick is in <laughs> addition to having villains, now there are going to be creatures that you're going to interact with. And they're going to function a lot like the villains that you're going to have to defeat uh, as they present threats along the way. Mm -hmm. So the gameplay is by and large the same. Uh, in addition to having mm -hmm. to defeat villains, now mm -hmm. you have to deal with some of these creatures. So you have things like a troll or fluffy, fluffy. three headed dog, Norbert the little baby dragon, oh. Cornish pixies. Mm hmm. Uh, we've gone back and okay. sort of revised a little bit some of the things that made sense to be a creature, but we didn't want to kind of spoil that stuff with the base set. So things like a Dementor now actually count as a creature too. And there are going to okay. be particular interactions that function specifically towards creatures and or villains or both. And so now like if it, if it impacts a creature, it would impact this Dementor now right. too. Yeah. I gotcha. Okay. Um, in addition to introducing new creatures, we're going to have new versions of the characters. So course, you have Ron. And I see that they've aged up a little bit a here. Little, a little bit. Well, so anybody who's familiar with the game mm -hmm. knows that we have different versions of characters. As you progress from box to box, mm -hmm. you get new versions. Uh, here, we're kind of sticking with that and having the older versions uh, with new abilities. Mm -hmm. So Harry, Ron, Hermione, Neville, and we have a new fifth Luna! playable character now. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's amazing. So people are really excited about that. There's been a lot of buzz and kind of some Oh my gosh. Some supposition is like, are they going to introduce a new character? Who would they introduce? So we have a new fifth playable character now with Luna. She has her own starting deck of cards. Uh, so she gets her own unique items. Okay, so have... Luna's ability, because I just got, oh, sure. I got to spoil it, right? The first time you draw an extra card on your turn, any one hero gains two hearts. Yeah, because Luna is a Ravenclaw, and the Ravenclaws tend to be the, uh, the mm -hmm. house that had more of the card drawing ability, we wanted to give her a card drawing power, just kind of to keep everything thematically in line with stuff. She's also got some new items. She's got her lion hat, so oh she can cheer gosh. on people when they're playing Quidditch. She's got her Spectre Specs, which has a really cool ability where you can peek at the top card of the Dark Arts deck and maybe choose to discard it so you can avo avoid some of those really bad effects. Mm -hmm. um, she, of course, gets her own ally, mm -hmm. the Crumplehorned Snorkak. <laughs> I love uh, it. And, and, of course, her Alohomora spells to get started. Mm -hmm. So she gets her own unique starting deck of cards, her own unique character. Um, so I think people are going to be really excited about that. Still, it's going to be a two to four player game, so one of the characters might have to sit on the sidelines when you're playing, but now you get that fifth character to choose from with her own starting deck of cards. I know people are really excited about that. Yeah, I think that that adds a lot. Yeah, that another, would be so much fun. Yeah. Another element that people were asking for, um, what we didn't want to introduce in the base game, uh, was the ability to kind of thin your deck a little bit and uh, maybe mm -hmm. get rid of some of those mm -hmm. starting cards when they weren't as powerful. Mm -hmm. We've introduced that mechanic with... Um, some of the cards in the expansion. So Turgio, which is a spell that cleans things, helps clean out your deck of some of the cards that might not be as valuable later on. Um, we've also got fun things like an old sock, so you can rescue Dobby. We've got new allies. 
<laughs> Argus Filch and Mrs. Norris. He also, since he was the groundskeeper, the janitor, he can also uh, banish cards out of your deck. Gotcha. Okay. You know? So again, trying to really embrace those fun thematic elements. That's awesome. Um, we've also got new dark arts events. Again, all themed around the creatures. So a menacing growl, a raging troll. We've also got uh, a new card that can get introduced into your deck uh, called uh, Detention. Oh. And they're cards that are negatively impacting your deck uh, mm -hmm. so that they have no function when they're in your hand. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's another thing that's going to want you to try and acquire some of those banished cards so you can clean out okay. your detention So they can't, you can get rid of you them, but they're going to clog you and tell you. Okay, yep. great. Yep, so you know, don't misbehave. You might go to detention. <laughs> Things might get a little bit tougher for you. Um, and the other new element that we're introducing is what we're calling encounters. So these function, I don't want to spoil anything for people who haven't played through the whole game yet, yeah. but this is another set of objectives you have to work through to win the game. And they all have a particular set of um, parameters that you have to achieve in order to complete the objective, mm -hmm. and then you're going to get another award. And this is something that's going to be going on while you're still dealing with the villains, okay. dealing with all the dark So this is another events. layer. It's another layer to add a little more complexity, give it another wrinkle, you know, try to increase the challenge of the game a little bit more. So, and they're all going to be specific themed to, there's going to be four boxes in the game, so four sets of encounters for four new adventures. And like we did with uh, the core game, with those seven boxes, now you've got four more uh, box adventures that you can go on and progress through. Uh, and they, like the seven boxes, they're additive in nature. So four more new adventures to kind of stack on and give you a really, really amazing experience as you layer in all the original stuff plus all the fun new stuff. So I don't want to spoil some of the secrets yeah, as people play through and yeah, open yeah, those boxes. No spoilers, no but, spoilers. But there's some cool stuff that you're going to get in the subsequent boxes. This stuff you're all seeing here is just from the first box. So there's even more that I'm not going to spoil. That is amazing. You've added so much, but, but I mean, the new character alone is pretty exciting. Right. I think a lot of people were hoping for that. Yep. I and I think, think Luna is huge. such a great choice. So you have now monsters you've added, these new events you've added, the, the deck thinning you've added. So this is basically, for anybody who's enjoyed the Harry Potter deck building game, the, the base game, mm -hmm. with the four new, like, it's a must have. And it oh, yeah. extends it's the gameplay tremendously. Yeah, I think we've really added a whole bunch more gameplay. And, and I know people say, like, well, once you play through the seven boxes, are you done? And I know people will go back and replay through and switch up sure, the characters. Yeah, so totally. now we've just introduced a whole bunch more fun stuff to create a ton more replayability and also embrace a different part of the Wizarding World that I don't think has seen as much focus with all the creatures and the monsters and, uh, you know, a lot of fun surprises to come. So we're really excited to be able to share this with everyone and we're looking at having it available at the end of August, right around Gen Con. All right, so Gen Con release, fingers crossed for that. And uh, thank you so much for sharing that. Hogwarts Battle, the monster box of Monsters expansion. You got it. <gasps> I'm, I'm so excited, I'm, I'm super excited. Thank you so much for being here. Now, I know we're, we're almost running out of time, but I know that you have a couple other things there, and we don't want, you know, Harry Potter to, um, as exciting it, as this is, is I want to give you a couple of seconds still because sure. there's at least one other thing in that box that I was pretty excited to see. So if you want to take a second to show off some of that. I would love to. Awesome. All right, so let me grab a couple of things here I'm real totally quick. not going to steal this. So I'm going to keep through. it for myself. All right. So uh, shipping this month, so this should be available by the end of the month, we have... Um, Munchkin X-Men. Dun, dun, dun. So we did Munchkin Marvel last year. Right. And we had two expansions for that. Now we're going to do X-Men. It's a complete standalone game. Okay. Uh, it compa it's compatible with uh, Munchkin Marvel mm -hmm. fully, but it can play on its own. Uh, coming later this uh, early summer, we have a Deadpool expansion. So 35 more cards for Munchkin X-Men just for Deadpool. Because he deserves his own expansion. He deserves his own. He so would stand for nothing less. Deadpool, just Deadpool. Awesome. And then uh, later, uh, early fall, we've got Munchkin, Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty making it to the Munchkin world. That's pretty yeah, exciting. We are really excited. We had the chance to partner with uh, Cartoon Network for Adventure Time for our first mm -hmm. uh, licensed Munchkin game. And they were gracious enough to want to work with us again for Rick and Morty. And we felt like it's just a perfect mashup. So we're really excited for this coming uh, early fall. This makes so much sense in yeah. so many ways. And I have a lot of friends that are huge Rick and Morty fans. and. Um, 
I, I think the Munchkin format, working with all the wacka, you know, the kind of the, the wackiness of the show, yep. will be super fun to mush together. It pairs up really nicely. And one of the things I really, really appreciate Steve Jackson letting us kind of push the envelope a little bit because uh, Munchkin mm. is, uh, I think, it was age graded like thirteen plus, mm -hmm. and it, you know, but it's pretty family friendly. And Rick and Morty definitely is it, a little bit edgier. We're, we're aging it up a yeah, little bit there for sure. So it's been really great to work with Steve Jackson Games, and that's yeah, a good been, crew over there. Yeah, it's been phenomenal. We've had tremendous success with the Munchkin brand, and we are excited to continue the partnartnership with X-Men, Deadpool, More and licenses. Rick and Morty. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. everybody has an IP or a license, a show, something that they feel really passionate about, and it's always fun to get a game around that that you can just enjoy and yeah, be silly with. Now, I'm sorry, was the are we looking at Gen Con for this as well? Uh, should be around that time frame, so you know, August, September. But we'll definitely have at least preview copies. Uh, for people to try out if it's not going to be widely available by then. Awesome. But that's what we're shooting for. As everyone knows, in, in the world of licensing, you definitely have to deal with some approval sometimes. So <laughs> we do our best, and hopefully our partners all give us the thumbs up. As awesome. Andrew, it yeah. is... Thank you. It's always such a pleasure. I love it. This is fantastic. We're this is excited. fantastic news.